Shalom, everyone. I am Dr. Renee, the assistant pastor of Empowerment of Faith Kingdom Center for Ambassadors. And I'm excited to be able to continue the message that I was teaching on dealing with the lost kings in the earth. And I want to say, Dr. Larry, we salute you once again for your years and years of uh, service as unto Elohim. And I want to say that it's been a blessing for me to be connected to this ministry and my life has been totally changed. So I'm excited about that as well. So let me get right into the word and I want to share this thought with you. A life or the life that I live currently should reflect what heaven looks like. And Yeshua, he made it simple when he said, when you see me, you see the father. And so when we're dealing with lost kings in the earth, we want to make sure that we are actually connected to kingdom business and not religion. And so uh, I want to share with you in Deuteronomy or Devarim 8, 18 through 19, the word of Elohim reads, but you shall remember Yahweh your Elohim, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore to, to your father as it is today. And then verse 19, it shall be if you shall forget Yahweh, your Elohim, and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, I testify against you today that you surely perish. You shall surely perish. As the nation uh, that the Lord or Yahweh makes to perish before you so that you shall perish because you would not listen to Yahweh, your Elohim's voice. And that's coming from the Messianic world translation. The word, con I mean, it clearly tells us in Devarim, it tells us that we should remember Elohim. And then it tells us, and we say the scripture all the time, that he's the one who gives us the ability to get wealth, but I really believe that we need to look at the rest of this sentence when it says that, so that we can do what? So that he can establish his covenant. It's about his covenant. We forgot about that part. And so when we're looking at this word, I want you to look at this word for remember. So the English uh, word does not do any justice to this word remember. When I look at this word remember in Hebrew, it is zekharta. And this particular word, it is comprised of zayin, kaf, resh, and then tav. I said, wow, that's powerful. For those of you who've been following us, uh, just learning the Hebrew Olivet, we know that Hebrew reads from right to left. And so this Zayin, it's telling me that there's a covenant. Something is being cut. And then uh, Kaith is telling me that something is being authorized or something is being sanctioned. And then Resh, it means ruler. And then you have Hav at the end. So this word remember, it doesn't, in, in English, it's not justified. It doesn't give me enough information. So this is why it's important that we dig into the Hebrew language to clearly understand what exactly was Elohim? What is he trying to convey to us? So the word remember, it means to cut covenant as an authorized ruler of the covenant. See, we are kings in the earth and as an ambassador, I need to make sure that I am dominating my circumstances rather than allowing my circumstance to dominate me. And then we have a root word here. So this is so powerful. When I saw that, I was like, wow. Father, I thank you that your word is loaded. Everything that you said, you had a purpose behind it. So I just want to encourage you to make sure that you dig into that Hebrew language. If you've been putting it off, don't put it off because there are so many truths that the father wants to reveal. He wants to bring illumination to his word. And so again, let's go back and devour them. Um, this particular word, uh, just looking at a couple of words in verse 19, where it reads, it shall be if you shall forget 
Yahava, your Elohim. So I want to look at this word forget. The Hebrew alphabet, and hopefully you're following me, forget is shakok, shakok. And so this particular word shakok, it's telling me that when I forget his covenant, it will destroy what was authorized to protect us. How do I get all of that out of his, this particular word, shakok? So we have shin, then we have chet, and then it ends with, wait a minute, that's shin, and then kaf, excuse me, and then it ends with chet. So shin is telling me that something is being destroyed. And then in this uh, context right here, the next Hebrew olivet is kaf, or some say kaf, but it's kaf. And kaf is telling me that something is being allowed. Something is being allowed. Well, what is being allowed? When we forget his covenant, it destroys what's authorized. Kaf also means uh, to allow, it means to sanction. It means to authorize and then Chet, it means to protect the, the picture meaning that invokes our memory of Chet is offense. So offense does what offense protects something. Okay. It guards something. So when I forget what is supposed to protect me, his covenant, his word is a shield. His word is um, a buckler. It's a fortress. I can run into it. His, the word tells me that the righteous run to his word and they are safe. But if I forget, it tells me here that I'm going to be destroyed. And this is what, this is what the word is telling us in Devarim 18 and 19, as we just said, if you shall forget Yahweh, your Elohim and walk after other gods and serve them and worship them, it says that you're going to perish. So as a kingdom ambassador, I need to make sure that I remember the covenant. I have to make sure. So earlier we were talking about, uh, make sure that I don't forget, but I remember the covenant. So let's look at the Hebrew word for covenant, which is bereath. And so when we, when we break this down, uh, we see that is Bayet Resh. And for those of you who've been following us, you know that whenever you see Bayet Resh, uh, that is actually one of the words for son. And then there's Yud and then Tav. So Bayet Yesh is telling me the son who has been established by the covenant. So that's, that's amazing. Or you can also say that uh, what's inside of the ruler with power, dominion, and authority, what, well, what is inside of that ruler? The covenant of the word. All right, so that's, that was really good. Uh, we just need to remember that we are to remember the covenant. So when uh, we think about that word covenant, we're also reminded of that re last Hebrew Olivet. And let's take a deep look at that for just one moment, and then we're gonna continue. Uh, tav, Tav is spelled Tav Tav. We remember that. So Tav is telling me that something is being marked. It's telling me that something is being identified for a special, uh, <laughs> I said a special, a special covenant relationship. This is really important. So when we allow the word of Elohim to be established in our hearts, what happens? We've been marked for his exclusive use. And during this time, this is very important for us to know because a lot of people are talking about, oh, oh, okay, is, is that the mark of the beast? Is that the mark of the beast? Okay, what about the mark of Elohim? Have you been marked? Do you have Tav in your life? Have you been marked by the precepts of his word? Have you been marked? Many are thinking that the mark of the beast uh, it's going to be a literal mark where they're stamping people foreheads. No, it's the way that you think. So anytime I'm thinking apart from Elohim's word, then I have already been marked by not the antichrist, as some say, but the anti-messiah or 
against Elohim's agenda. I've already been marked. So I need to make sure that I examine myself. And then someone is saying, well, what about the hand? I, uh, what about the hand? Am I, are we going to receive a mark? Well, the hand denotes how I'm doing something. So the mark of the uh, head, forehead, and then the mark of the hand, how we're thinking, how we're doing things. Have I been marked? Am I marked? Am I sealed by the Holy Spirit? Have I been marked with the covenant of the word? In other words, are the precepts of Elohim inside of me? And so we were talking about a lost king. When the king is lost or displaced or have disconnected, that person has been marked. But right now, it's still time to change. It's still, there's still time to change, but you know, eventually time is winding up and then, uh, you know, there'll be other opportunities and, and we'll talk about the rapture. And I don't know why we say the rapture because there are several raptures. So that's a whole, that's an entire different teaching, but Dr. Larry and I, we will be getting into that really soon. Okay. But getting back to the mark. So, uh, going back to where it's talking about tall, let's put that up tall. It means to be marked or identified for special use or a covenant relationship. See, I have a covenant relationship with the father and I've been marked by him. So when we allow his word to be established in our hearts, we have been marked for his exclusive use. Yet here's the, here's the opposite. When we disobey his word, we are marked or identified with the mark of the anti Messiah. So we have to make sure that we are marked by Elohim. Now let's look at this. So here's the question that I need to ask. Here are several questions. Am I marked with the government of the kingdom? Am I marked with the government of the kingdom? Am I marked with the ways of this world's culture? How do I know when different problems arise, when different laws are passed? As a kingdom ambassador, I have to remember that I'm not entitled to my opinion, but I'm here to establish the precepts of the kingdom right here on earth. So I'm not here to tell how I feel about this matter. It's already been written. It's already been stated. So I need to know that, okay, Father, you have already established this. Then I need to agree with what has already been established. Why? Because I've been marked with kingdom precepts. It's inside of me. Okay. Here's the next question that we need to ask ourselves. Am I marked with religion that has nothing to do with kingdom? I'm seeing how politics has intertwined with religion. The Republican party feel like they represent Christ by making a stand on certain issues. Yet the democratic party are saying that, well, Hey, we're Christians too. Uh, we, we, we don't believe in certain things. So I, I'm still, listen, Yeshua did never, he never came to establish religion. He never came. He came to establish his kingdom. So he's not Democrat. He's not a Republican. Well, I, I need to follow. I need to follow. Okay. Stop. <laughs> I had to say it at least one time. He never came to establish any of that. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. All right. So whose business was he about? He was about the father's business. All right. Now let's look at the next one. Here's another question that I need to ask. Am I marked with humanism? Well, humanism is thinking apart from the word of Elohim. As a matter of fact, Adam and Matzah Ezer Negad were the first humanists because they decided to make a covering for themselves. Go back and check it out for yourself in their sheet. All right. So what am I marked with? Hopefully I am marked with the principles and precepts of the kingdom. All right. So let's take a look at this, the power of the kingdom covenant. 
So we know that um, Elohim, he made a covenant with Abraham. Um, but before we can get into all of that, we need to just take a look at exactly what happened. Just to remind you of what happened during this particular time, uh, he became impatient and he decided to listen to the plan of his wife. Man, that sounds familiar. Somebody else listened to the plan of his wife. Okay. But anyway, uh, and the wife's plan was for him to sleep with her, um, some say concubine or whatever you want to say, but the person who was working for her, her maid servant, he, uh, she allowed him to sleep with him. Yeah, I said that right. She allowed him to sleep with her. Okay. Yeah. She allowed him to sleep with her and she became what is now known as a surrogate. Mm, it didn't work then and it does not work now. So here's the question that I need to ask myself. How many times have we tried to help the father out and make up something and then ask him to bless it? See, this is what she was doing because she had gotten impatient and um, Abram at this time, at this particular time, the father had spoken to him and told him that he was going to make him a great nation, but he had not, he didn't have any children. All right. So here's the question. How many times have we tried to help him out? See, when I do that, I'm doing exactly what she did. And when I try to help him out and then I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to do this. And then, yeah, just, okay. Okay. Uh, he said, whatever we bind on earth and whatever we lose, well, has it already been bound in heaven? Has it already been established? So if it hasn't been bound or already established or released, then he can't agree with that. The father is never to get with our program. We're supposed to get with his program. We're supposed to make earth look like heaven, not make heaven look like earth. Okay, so just like Yishmael, some are connected because Yishmael, he was connected to his earthly father, but that wasn't the father, heavenly father. That wasn't his purpose. So Elohim said that um, Yishmael, Yishmael was going to act like a wild donkey and live in opposition of what Elohim has promised. So anybody, you know, do you know anybody like that? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, hopefully not acting wild, doing their own thing. That's a form of humanism, just doing whatever you are big and bad enough to do there. And there are some people who are extremists and take it way too far. Okay, all right, so let's go back. So let's remind ourselves of this. Number one, I am a kingdom ambassador. You need to know who you are. Who are you representing? Number two, I am here to make the earth look like heaven. Yes, as it is in heaven, let it be right here on earth. That's what I'm supposed to do. And then number three, Again, I'm here to operate in the kingdom mandate. And we'll talk about that briefly. The father's purpose is my purpose. Well, what's your purpose? Well, what's your purpose? Well, what's your purpose? Uh, uh-huh. His purpose. That's my purpose. <laughs> okay. So here's the question. How do I know if I'm lost? How do I know if I'm a lost king who's disconnected? How do I know? Well, one indication, one indication that I could be disconnected from a congregation. Now it's different when you are seeking to connect and you're looking for, um, a place that is rightly dividing the word of truth. It's different when you're looking, but when you have no intention, like, ah, oh, I'm through with organized religion. I, I'm not doing it. I, I've been hurt. Now those people fake. No, 
the order has already been set. We need to get with his program, not create another religion. Because when you're disconnected and you're not even attempting to be orderly, when you're not attempting to be orderly, then it's saying that you're really a lost king. Number two, when we know the word, but won't obey it or apply it, that's what you call a lost king in the house. And I talked about that um, in a, another message, dealing with what some call the prodigal son, but I like to say it's the lost son and it's giving keys telling us about kingdom precepts, the lost son. And we know that the lost son, he was, he asked for his father's estate, half his portion of it. And then there was the uh, older brother. And then we were talking about how the older brother was in the house getting the word, had total access and refused to come in the house as a king. See, it's possible to be lost when you know the word, number two, know the word, but won't obey it or apply it. That's what you call a lost king in the house, but there is hope. Number three, doing what I want to do and then asking the father to bless it. There's a quote that I like to say that we have been so busy running our own lives, doing our own thing, and then asking the father to bless what he has no charge over. We, we must, we must return to the covenant and change the way that we think. All right. Number four, just flat out doing opposite what the word says. You uh, look, if this person is doing that, you, you know, the word and you just going to do opposite. Yeah. I know what it says, but I'm just going to do this. What? What? Okay. Number five, not accessing what belongs to you as a kingdom ambassador. See, it's one thing to be saved. And then it's another to come into the knowledge of the truth. I was talking to my husband about it. And I said, you know, some people actually believe that, um, everything is okay. You, you can just get saved. And then how to do the, when it's time, you're going to be in heaven, whatever, whatever. Listen, we're, we're not going to stay in heaven. Did we forget about that part? But what about the part about accessing what belonged to you as a kingdom ambassador, act, actually walking into kingdom dominion now, not waiting for the high, high, by and by, or whatever, however they say that. So when I was sharing this with my husband, I was saying that, yes, these people, they will be saved but they will not receive all of the rewards that they would have received as a kingdom ambassador who was dominating in the earth. Okay. So you will make it, you will make it. Hopefully, you know, everybody, those who are believing and walking as an overcoming believer, but we have to access and dominate. And then number six, Allowing your circumstance to dominate you instead of you dominating your circumstance. That's, that's almost all one and the same. So here is the quote that I mentioned earlier about running our own lives. But I want to talk to you about Abram just for a moment. So Abram, um, before his name was changed to Abraham, he was living in Canaan for 10 years. And so we were talking how Sarah, she gave her maid as a surrogate and Ishmael was birthed. So I want to look at some numbers here because I, for, you know, everything that's in me, it's almost like when you begin to study the word, everything matters. Every word, when the father, when you, when you study the scripture, uh, little things, um, things that I, have looked over before. It's like, it's just jumping off the page. I said, now I know 
that I have read this, but undoubtedly it didn't read me. It didn't permeate. It didn't saturate my mind. I didn't meditate on it long enough. So I was just looking at some things and I was like, okay, now Abram was 86 years old when Hagar birthed um, Ishmael. And then it says that Abram was 99 years old when Elohim appeared to him and changed his name to Abraham. So this 99 was significant because we know that we know that. Okay. So let's see number slide 14. Yes. So we know that Abram, you with me? I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to run off and leave you. <laughs> My excited is excited. Okay. So buckle up. We're going somewhere. Okay. Thank you. So Abram was 99 years old when Elohim appeared to him and changed his name to Abraham. So the Hebrew Olivet that goes with 90 is Saudi. And then the Hebrew Olivet that goes with nine is Tet. And I said, would you, you know how you look around my husband and I, we, we clown a little bit. Sometimes he clown more than I do. I said, would you look at this 99? He had a strong desire. Abraham, he had the strong desire inside of him, a strong desire of righteousness. When you go ahead and spell that whole word out, a strong desire to walk in the ways of the kingdom. Remember, it says that he was credited as being righteous. Mm. But anyway, and then he had a strong desire. And then the number nine, it's telling me that a decision has to be made. Well, we already see that there was a strong desire. So what is that? What is that decision that he's making? Well, this number nine, um, actually it's a picture of a snake and it means to choose. I'm either going to choose life or I'm going to choose death. So Abraham had chosen life. So there's the 99 here, the strong desire of the covenant of the word to follow righteousness. All right. At that 99. All right. Now look, Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Yitzhak was born to him. 100. So we know that the Hebrew Olivet 100, um, the Hebrew Olivet is Resh. And the number that corresponds with Resh is 100. So what is Resh telling me? Resh is telling me that this person was a ruler. Okay, yes. And then also Resh is also telling me that the intent of the person is to do something. So I know that his intent was to walk in the ways of the kingdom, according to everything that the word is already telling us, because we see that it says that it was credit to him, right? Yes. All right. So now let's look at some more numbers. This is so exciting to me. Looking at more numbers, there was actually 14 years uh, in between, whereas Ishmael and Yisik the birthing, the, the birthing of the two. So 14 years in between. So here we have num the number 10 and four. 10 is represented by the Hebrew Olivet Yud. And then also the number four, which is Dalet. 14 years, 14 years in between. So the number 10 represent, okay, Yud or the number 10, represents this, the power and the creative ability. Now see that creative ability in you, that is something powerful there because this tells me that if it's not there, the father is so concerned and he, he, he's so concerned about his word and watching over his word to perform it. He'll create it. The Holy Spirit will create it and make this thing happen according to his will now. All right. So that's number 10. And then you have the number four, which is Dalet, which is telling me that there's the access 
or the pathway of the kingdom culture. So there was 14 years in between. I know that Abram proved himself and he was faithful. He was, he was doing, he was like, okay, I messed up with Ishmael. And he even asked the father about him. Well, what about him? He said, well, uh, yeah, yeah. Elohim said, yeah, Ishmael, he's going to be the father of 12 rulers. Yeah. And he's going to be a great nation, but my covenant is going to be established with Yisik. So just looking at this, these numbers, man, I was like, oh man, father, you're so great. You're so awesome. Thank you. Thank you for bringing illumination to your word. Thank you for giving us a word from your word. Okay. So now when we're talking about covenant, let's look at the definition. So we know that a covenant is an agreement between two people. The lesser is to connect with the greater. So as a kingdom ambassador, we're to connect and be established with the greater one, which is Elohim. That's why we say greater is he that is within me than the other one, the one that's in the world. We ain't going to give him any clout, but yeah, greater is he that's in me. See, this is how powerful the covenant is. All right. So looking here, when we fail to connect or disconnect, when we fail to connect, connect to what? The covenant. Connect to his word that's already been established. Or when we disconnect from the covenant, when we disconnect from the ways of Elohim, we deem ourselves as lost kings in the earth. I'm not going to get away from that. So let's look at when uh, Elohim, when he changed the name of Abram. So when he changed the name from Abram to Abraham, we know that Abram, it means exalted father. And then when he changed it to Abraham, it means father of many nations. But when he did this, he took the limits off. And let me show you what I mean. I thought I had this highlighted, but it's not highlighted here. But when, um, when Elohim changed Abram's name to Abraham, he made a covenant with him. This is powerful. He took, Elohim took a part of his name, which is the hay, when you're looking at this, and I wish I could highlight it, but here it is. In Abraham, we see, we're looking, uh, let's look at Abram and I'll slow it down just a little bit. Abram is spelled olive, but yet resh and then mem. Abraham is spelled olive, but yet resh high and then mem. So there was a high put in there. And then when we're looking at the word Elohim, it is spelled Olive, Lamed, Hay, or Hai, Yud, Mem. So he took a part of his name, that Hay, and placed it in Abraham's name to establish his covenant. And this is how he made him father of many nations. He took the limits off. At first he was exalted father, but then he made him a father of many nations. And so let's look at Sarah because we know that her name was changed as well. So when the father, when he does something, it's not, I mean, he, okay. Hmm. Let me see what, which <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about my grand candy, uh, Yuda, who says, Hmm, let's see. So looking at here, looking at this word, Sarah, Hmm, let's see. Sarah, it was, it's actually pronounced Saraya. Saraya, it was changed to Sarah, or some say Sarah, but it was changed from Saraya to Sarah. So Saraya, it means to be bossy, and it's spelled Shin Resh Yud. Well, we that we recognize something. Shin Resh, it means prince, and then Yud, it means power. So this was the prince who was in power. She was no joke. She said, look, 
I want you to go get that my maid and I want you to go sleep with her. And that's what I want you to do. <laughs> and then the, the whole story, you can go back and read it for yourself. But she was she was kind of like bossing Abraham around. OK, but anyway, uh, Elohim said, no, that's not your name anymore. I'm changing your name. Your name. He he did the same thing. He took hay from Elohim and placed it at the ending of Sarah's name. And there it is, um, Shin Resh Hay. So we just said that Shin Resh means prince. And then, hey, what comes from the prince or the ruler? Now you're a princess. So out of all of the Hebrew olivets, and stay with me if you will, out of all the Hebrew olivets, Elohim, he chose hey. He added hey to both of their names to establish this covenant. Now, what, what, I mean, what's the point? It's pointing back to the kingdom mandate. It's pointing back. How is that? It's revealing heaven on earth. This is, this is beautiful because hey says, let it be whatever is established in heaven, let it be established here on earth. So he used hey, nothing that the father does is without purpose. Nothing, everything, every Hebrew Olivet, I, you know, we can, uh, you can never fully exhaust his word, illumination, will just come over and over again because you can never exhaust his word. All right, so let's looking at the kingdom mandate, just to remind you, because we've been saying this over and over again, uh, we find this in Bereshit um, 1 and 28, Elohim blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, and, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So he gave them dominion. He mandated them, make, make earth look like heaven. Make it. I want you to do it. All right. So we're to saturate the earth with the precepts of the covenant of the word. And so as I was thinking about it, I was thinking, man, that's awesome. Both of them, they got a new name. And it just reminded me um, in Hazan when it was talking about how the father, for, for those who overcome, they're going to receive a new name and nobody is going to know that name, but that person and our name, we're going to be given a white stone. It said, so he who overcome, I will give you a new name. All right. Now that's in Hazan 2 and 17. You can go back and look at that. All right. Hold tight. Now. So the question is, are we ready to not only stay connected, but the question is for the person who's the lost king, are you ready to get connected? Because now is not the time. Now is not the time to be disconnected from the kingdom. Remember, we said that Yeshua, he never came to establish a religion. And the, the scripture also tells us that there must be a great falling away first before Yeshua returns. So what are we supposed to do? We're to disconnect from religion and connect to kingdom. So let's look at the scripture that I just mentioned. You can find it in second Thessalonians two or Thessalonicum. Let's see if I, did I pronounce that right? Thessalonicum. I need to say that more. Tassilonicum, the renew my mind, renew my mind. Tassilonicum, uh, be yet to, and let's look at this in, in verse one. But in connection with the coming of our Yahava, Yeshua, the Messiah, and our gathering together to meet him, we ask you brothers not to be easily shaken in your thinking or anxious because of a spirit or a spoken message or a letter supposedly from us claiming that the day of Yahweh has already come. Believe it or not, there are some people who are saying that the rapture is already taking place. Nah, bro, you're wrong. Verse three, don't let anyone deceive you in any way. 
for the day will not come until after the apostasy apostasy has come and the man who separates himself from the Torah, the teachings of the ruler, remember that Torah teachings of the ruler of, of, of heaven teachings of the covenant of the cross. Yes. Has been revealed the one destined for doom. Verse four, he will oppose himself to everything that people call a God or make an object of worship. He will put himself above them all so that he will sit in the temple of Elohim and proclaim that he himself is Elohim. Don't you remember that when I was still with you, I used to tell you these things. And now you know what is restraining so that he may be revealed on his own time. Well, what's restraining him? The power of the overcoming believer is restraining. <laughs> Verse seven, for already this separating from Torah is at work secretly, but it will secretly, but it will be secretly only until he who is restraining is out of the way. Talking about the overcoming ambassadors. Verse eight, then the one who embodies separations from the Torah will be revealed. The one whom Yahweh Yeshua will slay with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the glory of his coming. When this man who avoids Torah comes, the adversary will give him the power to work all kinds of false miracles, signs, and wonders. See, this is why it's so important that I know and I have a relationship with the Father, that I understand his covenant. That word tells me that my sheep knows my voice and a stranger, he will not hearken. So if that's the case, if I have spent time and I'm fellowshipping and all of these signs and wonders and, and miracles, I won't be dismayed by that. I won't be like, oh, okay, no, the answer is no, that's not him. Verse 10, he will enable him to deceive in all kinds of wicked ways, those who are headed for destruction because they would not receive the love of the truth that could have saved them. Do you want to know the truth? Can you receive the truth? Embrace the truth. Verse 11. This is why Elohim is causing them to go astray so that they will believe the lie. There are many scriptures in the, the word of Elohim that move me. This one, every time I read it, verse 11. Is there anything that Elohim attempt to accomplish that he cannot accomplish. It says that this is why Elohim is causing them to go astray so that they'll believe the lie. Since you do not love the truth, since you want to do your own thing, since you think it's okay to be disconnected from the kingdom and be connected to religion. He said, I'm going to cause you to go astray and believe the lie. That's the great apostasy. Man, that, whoo, that, that right there. Okay, verse 12. The result will be that all who have not believed the truth, but have taken their pleasure in wickedness will be condemned. My goodness today. That's loaded. That, that will cause you as a kingdom amb ambassador. It's like, okay, Father. I love your word. I love your word. How do I, how does he know that you love his word? Well, according to his word, he knows that we love his word by our obedience. See, it's one thing for me to say, Oh, father, I love you. Oh, I love you. I love you. But if I don't have a corresponding action, I can save that breath because it's not doing anything. Okay. We just, we just talking to the wind talk. You know how we say talk to the hand? Well, we're talking to the wind when we are saying something and not obeying according to the word. All right. So as I bring this to a close, I want to ask you and just ask you once again, I've asked these questions before. Who am I? Who am I? Where am I from? 
the, these are the questions that I need to know and how do I answer these things? When I get the answer, I need to apply it. Why am I here? What is my purpose? And what am I called to do? I'm going to say that one more time. Slide 25. <laughs> Who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? What is my purpose? And what am I called to do? As a kingdom ambassador, it's time to make sure that I am connected to the kingdom, number one, that I am following the ways and the precepts of Elohim, that I'm not out just doing my own thing and like, oh, I don't, I don't think we should tithe. As a matter of fact, I take my tithe and I give it to the poor. That's not a tithe. The tithe is honorable. The tithe is holy. The tithe is not to be given to a person uh, that's in need. That's not the order. The order has already been set. So we've been doing our own thing and just thinking, okay, well, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Well, those people aren't right. Wait, go back to the manufacturer. See what the word is already saying about that situation. He has already spoken. He has not changed. He said, I am Elohim. I change not. His word is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I need to make sure as a kingdom ambassador, that I am connected to the ways of the kingdom. He's already telling me what I need to do. I need to saturate this earth with the precepts of the kingdom. Not in a religious way, not, not in a denominational way. The, the fourth bishop of the 31st uh, jurisdiction of whatever. No, no, not all of those shenanigans. No, it's time to just drop. <laughs> Oh my goodness, it's time, it's time to just stop, just drop all of the religion and be about the Father's business. So for those who have been watching, I hope you have been blessed. I hope your faith has been empowered. I hope your spirit has been stirred. If you are a lost king, you don't have to be lost. The word says repent. That means to change my mind about something. I make the exchange for my misconception for a his conceptions, his precepts, his ways. If you're lost, you don't have to be lost unless you choose to be. And then we see, according to the word in Hazan, exactly what happens for those who choose not to overcome. And also in Thessalonians, when we were just talking about the great apostasy, I have to make sure that I love the word enough to obey it and change the way that I think. And then after I have been converted, I'm to go and strengthen my brother. All right, be blessed, shalom to you. And we are looking to hear from you really soon. Be sure to like and also follow us on our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Shalom to you, be blessed.